Okay, my name's Chris Parkin and I've been involved with SHARP since it began in 1981. Um, this video is about, it contains the stories of lots of people who've been involved in the project, but I'm going to start by telling you the beginnings of the organisation. Originally, SHARP wasn't called SHARP at all, it was Houghton and District Advice and Support Centre and it was formed in 1981 when a group of local professionals, community activists came together and they met in the council chamber in Houghton Council Offices and decided to form the organisation Houghton and District Advice and Support Centre. And the purpose of the organisation was to enable local residents of the Houghton District, Houghton District to have access to independent advice so that they could make decisions that affected their lives. And that's always been the philosophy of the organisation. Um, grant funding was secured from the local authority and, and in early 82 the first workers were appointed. Um, the, in the early days um, the workers were based in Hall Lane YMCA um, and had a corner of the boardroom to operate from. Those early days were, were spent um, making contacts with the local groups look, and more importantly looking for permanent premises. And by the September, we were able to move into newly refurbished premises in Shiny Row and start delivering advice. Um, we delivered advice to individuals, but we also did a lot of work with community groups, in particular residents and tenants groups, and groups of women who were concerned for um, their children and activities for children. Um, a key event I think in the early days was the miners' strike of 1984 and that event was important because it cemented our relationship with the people of, of the area. Um, we had queues out the door of people who were um, wanting advice because the miners um, didn't have access to a great deal of benefits. We spent our time going around to union meetings, working with people to provide miners' support groups and it was an, an occasion which really cemented our relationship with local residents. After the miners' strike, demand for the services remained high because we were in a recession, people were losing employment um, and they needed advice more than ever. Um, and the organisation ticked along quite nicely. Unfortunately, this was also a time when local authority cutbacks were operational and the grant funding was declining and uh, eventually reduced when the local authority decided to employ their own welfare rights workers. The centre then operated with the local authority advice workers until a decision was taken to withdraw them altogether and operate on an area basis. At that point, the management committee of who was still then Houghton and District Advice and Support Centre decided that they were going to stay. We had the benefits of owning the building in Shiny Row and we applied successfully for lottery funding and decided to relaunch the organisation a shiny advice and resource project. Um, it's now probably better for me to hand over to some of the many people who have been involved in the project since that time and they'll tell you their stories, particularly how they got involved in the organisation, the benefits to them and how the organisation has made a difference to their lives and the lives of their community. And I now hand over to these people. Um, I'm Alex. I started. I'm, I'm, a, I'm on the board of directors, but I also volunteer here. Um, I've been involved for about well, uh, 30 years ago. My mum started the shop, the advice centre, and uh, I only really I've been, I've been involved my whole life really since since I was born and since I was a kid. But I was really involved about 2007. I started volunteering a couple of days a week. So it's a bit of a change from from when I was. When I was a little kid, my mum was giving advice in the old building in uh, 15, 14, 15. And uh, I used to run, a, run around and cause havoc. I used to have, I remember playing, making cups of tea and going out the back and messing up people's desks and playing up with things. And there was a stair lift because we had the upstairs. And then uh, we used to, about three of us, we used to always play in the stair lift. And it was a really cool stair lift around the corner. And we used to love that bit of the stair lift. So we used to always play in the stair lift. Constantly. My name's Trisha Doyle. Um, I'm a local resident in Shiny Roll. Um, and my uh, dealings with the shop began uh, some years ago in the 80s uh, where I became uh, involved in a confidence building course which um, you know, re which gave me the opportunity to recognise that I did have the confidence um, to, to talk to people and 
become involved in something and hence my involvement in Shining Wild Waste Centre. Um, I did some voluntary work and from there I went on to the management committee where I remained for some years. But, I mean, one of the things why I stayed around Sharp for so long and I was involved from 1988 right through to 2002, so it was 14 years, was because of its, its independence, but more importantly, that it used welfare rights as a vehicle for community development. And so that because we got that funding, we were able to step up the community development a lot more. And I think that probably, you know, to, to have secured this building was, a, was an outcome of that process. But initially we got another resource centre just sort of like... Hi, I'm Gina Smith. Um, uh, got involved with the shop, which was Houghton District and Appliance and Support Centre. And around about 1996, 97, I would say, um, became a volunteer. Um, that was through Sue Robson, who was involved at the time, uh, a worker. Um, I was asked to go on the committee, which I did. I was a bit overwhelming at first. Met the rest of the committee members at the time. Um. Right, I'm Barbara Haswell, and I've been with Sharp since 1998. I joined as a volunteer. Um, reason for joining. I don't really know, just I've been bringing my kids up and um, I just wanted to do something. Um, the, I didn't really know what shop was involved in as such, but it was the thought of just coming in and doing some voluntary work. Um, Michael Rooney was the advice. I came involved in shop at, just before 2000. There was funding available to celebrate the Queen's Jubilee and we set up a group called Shiny 2000. There was about five of us involved, but there was two main characters, myself and Julie Hall. We used to come in the shop once a week, on a Tuesday, and take over a room where they helped us with all our fundraising, um, phone calls, letters, everything. We couldn't have done it without them. They backed us all the way, they supported us through thick and thin. Hello, my name is Balbinda Kaur. I originally came here in 2000 as a volunteer, worked as a volunteer for a year and then found work employment and I started as a volunteer training officer. Worked that for about three years until the funding came to an end at which point I needed to leave. Um, tried different jobs in the meantime but back in 2009 a job opportunity arose again at the centre and I came back as an administrator role which I am still doing to this day and my job is to oversee. Hi, my name is Michelle Carahar. I currently work for an organisation called Locality. I used to work for an organisation called BASAC. Um, and Sharp was a member of these organisations as a national community organisation membership. I first met people at Sharp in the spring of 2007. In fact, I was interviewed for my job here in Sharp. And um, when I took up the post, I first came here to speak to the staff about what was going on and what the problems were. Unfortunately, at that time, Sharp was experiencing a major financial crisis and all the staff had to go on to be made redundant. I worked with the board, particularly Chris, who was the chair of the board at the moment to, at the time, to, to help through, work through that process and to figure out what to happen next. Changes that I've seen. There's a lot of changes, especially in the last few years, since um, I've, there's a different type of person that comes through the door. Um, it's those that's never been in the system before, um, the people that thought that they had jobs for life and it's the homeowners, um, completely new to it, really lost. Um, pro bigger problems and the changes now that we've got, well with the recession, you know, end of 2008, we, we definitely saw a big change in the type of person that came through the door, um, the type of debts. Um, years ago it was, it was the doorstep collectors, it was the catalogues, you saw the old credit card, card store card, now it's, it's bigger, it's people's homes, it's a roof over the head, you know, they thought. Because there was a lot of groups set up from here and have moved on and then they've done great things, you know, there was a walkers group and everything that was set up and they're still going, but they're moved on to different places because of funding and stuff. Sure. We set up a credit union, we were going into different clubs and bars, doing meetings, 
and out the doors meet, and should we got the credit union informed. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Lisa Watson, and I'm company secretary here at Sharps, I'm on the management board. Um, my involvement with Sharp started in around um, early 2000. Um, after having my two children, um, I got involved in a local parent and toddler group, who, which is still going today. Um, and from that, I got involved with um, what was She Was Dart, Snap Children's, uh, Children's Centres. Um, and they were heavily involved with Sharp because it was setting something new up within the community and it was a, a new government project and so obviously they wanted lots of local um, projects involvement and they wanted um, shiny more childcare involved and lots of parent reps. Yeah, so it's been a really good experience and it's made me want to um, be able to help other people like be there and then someone comes and opens the door and they feel like the world's crumbling down on them and by the time they walk out the door they feel like a, a weight's been lifted off their shoulders so it's, um, it's been a very good experience and um, as it's my third year I'm kind of in a battle about what I want to do but I think now I've um, decided I'm going to be a solicitor I want to be a solicitor so I'll work towards that and hopefully I'll practice as a family solicitor one day. <laughs> I'm Norman Rain. I'm 78 year old and uh, I lost a wife in 1951 and I thought I would take up one work to take my mind off it. Hi, my name's Phil, I'm 32, I just live half a mile away and I come here to be a volunteer and I enjoy every minute of them. I'm here for about 24 hours a week. I don't do any cooking or anything, mainly cleaning uh, and assisting people who do do any cooking. I'm happy to go up and down stairs and, and fetch and carry things but it's good because after being out of work for three years I have suffered from many things, a bad head injury, uh, depression which I still suffer from, take medication and trying to get back into work I thought that coming to shop would be a good thing for me. Um, my name is Camilla and I came from Poland six years ago and in Poland I finished a new university in public relations, marketing and advertising but I've decided to come over here to learn a bit more English and I found it very hard that's why I've decided to find a voluntary job and I got it in here and I I love to cook and bake, that's why I take a part in our cafe and I baked some cakes for sale. Anyway, this lad that was doing the course, he said like, well, would you like to come in and help us out? You know, and he said, well, I've got to practice every day anyway, you know, so I'll, I'll come in. And if you've got an advanced, somebody that can basically play the guitar, we'll just sit and play together. And he did. Anyway, Barbara in there just said, well, why don't you ask that Alan to... Uh, if he, he lives on the back there, would he come along just, just to shoot here, like? And we've become mates, I mean, I've got him down on my phone as Alan Ibanez. I don't know his sad name, he's just Alan Ibanez, because he's almost like, he's got Ibanez guitars. And I came here because I was doing a dissertation on child poverty for uni and I wanted to learn more about social policy and how that is directly affecting people in my area. So that's why I got to sit in with the advisors because that was my interest. But that finished in April and I've just kept coming back since then because it's so fascinating and I think when you're here you see how much of a difference this place makes to the community. And I'm going to have to leave in a few weeks because I've got a job in the House of Commons at the start of September so I'm very sad to leave but excited also for new things. But I would have loved to stay. <laughs> I, would, I would hope that funding wouldn't dry up because I think that if you look at somewhere like Shiny Row that you know that you know it's, it's got good transport links you know it's got it's got a lot going for it but but if you could kind of like almost do 
um, like that that old black and white film where you, where you where you, you the, where, where the kind of it goes that I can't remember the name of the film, but it, it's as if this guy's never lived. So if you could imagine what Shiny Raw would be like, if Sharp had never been here, right? And it, it, that that I would imagine that there would be a lot more deprivation, probably a lot more more social divisions and stuff like that. You know, I think that that we that we we we. We maybe can't prove it as well as we should be able to, but I think that we've kept this community stable, really, and you know, and probably generated quite a lot of income into it as well from one source or another. Thank you for watching. I'm sure you agree that those stories are inspirational. Over the years, it's clear that Sharp has made a real difference to people's lives. It's also clear that Sharp's the survivor. It's overcome lots of challenges, particularly in terms of funding and changes to government policy. We've achieved that by being flexible and keeping our main aim central to all our activities. That aim is to provide members of the local community with advice and information that enables them to take control of their own lives. The future will contain many similar challenges current funding climate is very difficult and we're faced with huge changes to the benefit system which is causing great hardship to many local residents. We'll continue to, to, to survive as an organisation by remaining an organisation that keeps local people involved in the management of the organisation and ensuring that we're responsive to local needs. Thank you very much.